Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 16th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and while I'm recording today from Jacksonville, I'm actually teaching a class that was supposed to be happening in San Diego. It's also, of course, just about a year that, uh, well, I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida exclusively. But classes, of course, continue worldwide. It's just all the jet lag without any of the travel. Proofpoint came across an interesting piece of malware that they're calling Nimza Loader. The name is derived in part from NIM, the programming language that was used to create this malware. Now, if you haven't heard of NIM, you're not alone. I didn't hear about it, I have to admit, until I read about this malware. But if you sort of read the boilerplate on what's good about NIM, it kind of gives you an idea why attackers may choose this language. And it says here that NIM generates native dependency-free executables, not dependent on a virtual machine, which are small and easy for redistribution. And of course, any new and a little bit odd programming language like this is probably going to create somewhat unique and different binaries that will evade traditional signatures. The distribution methods follow the more standard pattern of first uh, sending an email. Now, in this case, the emails tend to be a bit more personalized and then a link in the email will direct uh, the victim uh, to uh, the actual binary that actually happens uh, to be hosted within Slack. That's yet another trick that tends to be quite successful in evading filters, given that Slack is now a very commonly used enterprise tool. And in the example described by Proofpoint, the malware claims to be a PDF, but then of course isn't executable and the user will be tricked into clicking and with that executing the file. Nimsa Loader is, as the name implies, just a loader, so it downloads additional malware after it's installed, and uh, Proofpoint does find that it tends to be used then to install Cobalt Strike. And Microsoft released an emergency update for Windows 10, and in this case, not to fix a vulnerability, but instead to fix some side effects that apparently caused Windows 10 to crash if it was used with certain printers. This issue was introduced with last week's monthly patches, and this new emergency update now fixes this particular bug. If you didn't expect experience any problems with your printer and it only affects certain types of printers, then you probably don't have any need to apply this particular update. And Microsoft's Azure Active Directory is experiencing outages that started at 19, uh, 1500 hours uh, UTC and are still ongoing as I'm recording this on Monday evening here on the East Coast. Of course, uh, Azure Active Directory is used uh, for a number of different authentication features uh, within uh, the Azure cloud ecosystems. And as a result, uh, users experiencing uh, problems logging into, for example, Microsoft Teams, Office, Dynamics, Xbox Live, and the Azure portal. I myself had some issues logging into Outlook 365 during the day today, but overall uh, the outage seems to be spotty and not necessarily affect all users. Probably depends on whether or not you already are authenticated or whether you have to newly authenticate to a particular service. Yes, and I know uh, IBM DB2 database is still used in some enterprises. So you certainly want to stay up to date with patches and IBM today released an update for IBM DB2, DB2 FM, which is vulnerable to a buffer overflow that can lead to execution of code as a root. However, in order to take advantage uh, of the vulnerability, an attacker already has to have local access to the particular system. So with that, this is really more a privilege escalation vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.